shall live out of his pity. Many died because they couldn't look up. Many died because they could not look up. So Jesus Christ, making this statement about as Moses lifted up this serpent, now we have understanding of what it means. So shall the Son of Man, Jesus, be lifted up. So shall the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God said, look unto that serpent, and you will live. Now the same picture has been given to us. Ah, so Jesus Christ is like the serpent that Moses lifted. And everyone that can look unto him shall be what? Shall have eternal life. This is wonderful. It is wonderful because it means that it is only they that have come to a point to realize that they have what? They have sinned. Because people prayed. They went to Moses and said, Moses, please pray for us. Help us in prayer to God because we have come to the point to see that we have sinned. Then there was a solution from God to his people. Then there was a solution from God to his people. And the solution is Christ. Jesus Christ is our solution. You know, it is interesting because now you will bring it to the life that we are living. We have been bitten by the serpent from every corner. The serpent bite is all over. But that is the reason why Jesus Christ was sent. He was sent to redeem the sinners. The beatings of the serpent are the sins that we have. And Christ is the one that has been lifted for everyone and each one of us. You want to be saved? Then you have to look up. You want to be saved? Then you have to look and live a heavenly life, not an earthly life. Everyone who has his eyes pointed towards the ground. And not in Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Then you will be buried. Because the people of Moses, they die. They that could not look unto the serpent that was lifted, they die. Anyone that is living with his eyes pointed on the earth will be buried in the earth. Earthly versus heavenly. Jesus said, I am the one who descended and I'm telling you heavenly things and you are not believing. But let me say this. The book of Numbers 23 and the verse is 19 to 21. We are bringing everything to an end. The word of God says, he said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That is the definition of God. But at the same time, God is also defining who a man is from this same scripture. Because he said, God is not a man. God is not a man. That he should lie. So it means that man lies. The characteristic of a man is what is a liar. From God's point of view, a man is a liar. And he's different from God. A man is someone that needs to repent. God needs no repentance. A man is someone that can say something and will not do it. Unfaithful and you cannot rely on him either. A man is someone that has spoken 
and he will not be able to bring it to pass what he said he was going to do. This is not part of God's attributes. That is why the Lord said, I am not a man to lie. God is not a man. This is the reason why when in Psalm 118 and the verses 8 and 9, he said, it is better to put, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord to put confidence in man. Because man is unstable. Man is a liar. Man does not have the ability to maintain what he says he's going to do. Man can stand today with all strength. Tomorrow he's falling. He has no control over so many things. That is man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. To put confidence in princes, it means that it is better to lift your eyes and look unto heaven. Look unto Jesus rather than looking unto, I don't know, whatever connection that you have in whatever area that you have, you, you, you know, you, 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 you have a need. Don't trust and put your confidence in man. God is not a man. Anybody that trusts in a man remains here on earth. Anyone that living a life and his purpose of life is always looking onto a man is a person that is living earthly or a man that is living with a sight, not by faith, by sight. God is not a man to lie. You remember what, what happened in the church? In the book of Acts, Acts 5.3, when Ananias and Sapphira, you know, in the church, when the church has come together, the, you know, the fear of the Lord was not even upon them. A man can go to the extent that in the midst of the church, the very presence of God, they are still lying, craftiness, dubious, and just name it. Living a life that is what? That is heavenly. Will get rid of these purposes, these attributes that are of earth. Attributes of Adamic nature. Getting rid of those lies. You see, the Lord said that he is God and he is not a man. Shall he not do what he says he will do? There is a verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and the verse is 24. He said, faithful is he who called thee. He also will do it. God that put you here is the one that is going to help you run his purpose. God that put you here on earth. As far as you've been looking unto him, it is almighty God that will bring to pass what he says that you will be coming. To do. I love the last statement. Shall he not make it good? He had spoken. And shall he not make it good? He had spoken. And shall he not make it good? Every time that the Lord spoke. He's always looking into what he had said. To see. And that is the story of the whole Genesis. Genesis 1. And the Lord, you know, I just, Genesis 1, 3, and 4. He said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided the light from. So, God said, and he saw, and it was good. Will he say, and look, and not making it good? <laughs> when he said it, and he looked at it. If he realized that it was not good, he would, he would have what? Taint things. I spoke it. I watch over what I said. And I make sure that it pleases me. Not you. Everything that 
God is doing in our lives. He's doing it for himself. So when God has spoken to you, the word that had come to you, it is the word of God. It is meant to bring you to what is called what? Good. When the Lord spoke his word, Moses, go take my people out of Egypt to the Canaan land. That land was what? Milk and honey flowing. But the problem that we have today is that we don't understand milk and honey. So Jesus Christ made a clear statement. The Lord said in John 16, 33, he said, I am telling you these things so that when you are living them, you should know that in me, you will have peace, but in the world, you will have what? Tribulations. And we are taking things for granted because we are always thinking that the honey and the milk are something that is just easy. The clear indication that it is not easy is that the last time that the Lord sent, he sent the Israelites to go and check the honey and the milk. They came back and said that this honey and milk, hey, <laughs> It is mixed with giants, trials and tribulations. What the Lord has that is very good. It does not mean that you will not be going through tough times. In this world here, please, as a child of God, you will be facing more difficulties than the people of the world. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. A born again Christian, a born again child of God, born of the Spirit, the power that it takes to overcome the world has already been given. Lift up your eyes, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, the initiator of your life and the finisher of your life. Faithful is he who called you. He also will do it. The Lord that put you here, he's the one that is going to help you to accomplish what he wants from you. May God bless you. Amen. Everyone is very welcome. We thank God for your lives. The word of the day, of the day is titled, Christ as the sacrifice lamb unto God. Christ as the sacrifice lamb unto what? Unto God. Thank you, my Lord, for your goodness and for your mercies upon our lives. Three types of offerings unto God. Three types of offerings unto Almighty God. Number one is what we just said, Christ as the sacrificial, sacrificial lamb unto God. Christ as the sacrificial lamb unto God. Number two, conversion of the Gentiles as offering unto God. Conversion of Gentiles as offering unto God. Number three, conversion of Jews as offering unto God. So, Christ as the sacrificial lamb unto God. This is what we are going to dwell on today as the word of the day. The book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5 and the verse is 2. Christ's offering of himself. The word says that walk in love. Walk in love as Christ also had loved us. Walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Walking in love because it is Christ who had first and foremost loved us and given himself as a sacrificial offering to God 
sweet smelling savor so it is christ that died for us it is christ that sacrificed for us it is the lord that paid the price and that sacrifice is pleasing in the sight of the father he said sweet smelling sweet smelling offering so the life of christ had pleased the father and he came as a sacrifice sacrifice cannot please god almighty without sacrifice you can't please god almighty without what sacrifice matter of fact the faith the kingdom faith itself hebrews eleven six, he said without faith it is impossible to please god but faith is full of sacrifice faith is full of what sacrifice sacrifice we're going to break down things as many of the revelation are packaged in hebrews 10 from one downwards so we're going to go from Hebrews 10, 1 to 2 first. By saying that the law, as of the law of Moses, was a shadow of good things to come, and the sacrifices under the law made not the promise perfect. So what are we going to prove here? What we are going to prove, number one, is that the law has been changed. They have, the dispensation has been changed. The law of Moses is not what we are swimming in today. There have been another law. There have been another law. The Bible says, John 1.17 says that he said, The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So right there, you can see that there is a higher height. There is a higher height. Things have been changed. The law was given, but grace and truth is now available to us. And Romans 8, 2 talks about, he said, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, had made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of sin and death, that was the old, the law of Moses. It was sin and death. You commit sin, the result is for you to die. It is the law. It is the law. So everything was all outward. But now, the change of dispensation came with the change of the law. It is not outward law anymore. It is an inward law. It is an inward law. So it is not how much you come and stand there and show yourself as a great minister of God, as a great, you know, servant of God. It is about what you are living, what is within you. You can come and fake people, but you cannot fake God. That is why he said God is not mocked. Everything that you sow, you're going to reap. The people of the Old Testament were fooling people all the time. The Pharisees will come stand there as great people, great ministers of God. But meanwhile, they were just, you know, burning from within. Crucify him from within. They couldn't even recognize the move of God. That is how much when one wants to dwell in the law, everything, have you seen me? Have you seen me? Have you seen what I can, what, what I can do? No, it is not have they seen you. Have God seen your heart? This is what we are talking about. All this fake stuff that we are putting on, it has to stop. It is the spirit of God that is at work today. Say so God faded out one to usher in new one. I said Hebrews 10, 1 to 2. He said, for the law, having a shadow, the law, having a shadow is not a real thing. A shadow is not a real thing. He said, for the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things. This is real. So the very image of the things, the real one is there. But the law has to be ushered in because people must be prepared. They can't take the real one right away. So the law is like a schoolmaster to teach them to a higher level. You have to graduate from one class to another. Allow yourself to go through. 
for the spirit of god to prepare you you will get there you will get there you where what your heart desire you want to have that fame and everything else please humble yourself go through the school of almighty god let the spirit of god teach you there are some things that you can never ever ever learn them from school no way there are so many things in the ministry work as you are called by god you can never get that from school nobody can teach you that except the spirit of god nobody so humility it is the basic requirement to move with god basic requirement to move with god he said god regards he regards the one that is that is having contract spirit contract spirit that tremble at his word humility hears the word of god and recognize it as the word of god the very image will come but the shadow has to be, has to be released first we are still on hebrews 10 1 he said uh, these things that we just said the the shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never listen to this can never in other words the shadow can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commerce there unto perfect you have been doing the same thing you have been doing the same thing over and over and over and over and your state you have never seen any progress there is no perfection coming out of this so the same people you have to understand what is going on here the reason why the real thing has to come to pass but we have to train people as they keep doing the same thing he said that the law under the law people keep coming with sacrifices the sacrifices it has built a type of mentality within them that no matter of fact if i go home and i transgress the law of god i have to quickly come and sacrifice for the you know come to the priest with my sacrifice for the priest to stand for me i will be cleansed and i am okay that type of mentality you will never go up never go up you are not seeking for perfection to come you dwell at the same position all the time you are doing the same thing but you are not thinking of what you are doing you are not seeking for improvement this is you worshiping god in, you know under the new dispensation new covenant with the spirit of old covenant it's very destructive you yourself have become a blockade to your own progress perfection cannot come perfection cannot come you have to see others doing well and recognize that this is good and i want to get there i see a lot a lot in the children of god's life today they want to come up high they see the real the real model jesus christ instead of following jesus they look at it they said oh no i don't think i can really do this and they are giving up you can't do it because you are not willing to but if you are willing to there is a spirit that has been given by the role model that is going to help you to get there but the willingness if the heart is blocking you you can never make progress the man has become his own enemy his mind is his enemy his heart is his enemy people that are living today under the new covenant with the spirit of old testament you can't move forward that is why you are still turning around on the wilderness over and over doing the same thing we have to move forward you have to move forward you have to come up higher when the progress is not them physically you know what it means it is because spiritually there is a failure the man's spirit is stagnant stagnant and you are not seeking to do something about it it is not when you come and you know try to display no we are not talking about that god knows he knows that is the reason why they will put two people there and they said lord who do you choose and the lord said i'm choosing matthias because his heart is right before me that is how god chose i mean that's how god chooses that is how both of them are qualified in the sight of people but only one is accepted in god's sight 
we approach the scriptures in their rightful perspective perfection must come on as we look more on and more onto the author and the finisher of our faith our lord jesus christ so verse 2 of hebrews 10 the word says for then would they not have ceased to be offered for then would they not have ceased to be offered what is he talking about he said that as they keep sacrificing 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 and progress is not coming on why would you continue sacrificing anyway you know a man come, must come to a point to start questioning the reason of why he's doing what he's doing the reason your reason of stagnancy you have to question yourself uh, by the way it takes grace to even see yourself as someone who is stagnant that progresses you know it takes man's integrity and honesty you have to be honest to yourself if you are not honest to others be honest to yourself the desire of the heart to progress must be following with with, with, with the action the willingness to do so the willingness to do so it is the reality he said why why are they why why is they are they doing the same thing keep on sacrificing you sin today you bring the goat you sin tomorrow you bring the goat you say so what, what, what is all this man must ask himself when is this goat stuff going to stop when is this all these sacrifices when is it going to stop to god there was a real image that was to bring forth to them but he wants to see how much they really want from him so one can be living moving with god and be thinking that everything is well when matter of fact it is not well at all it is not you have to recognize your wilderness when things are not right you have to know that things are not right this morning on sunday school we were talking about this 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 this, this things somebody have to stand deuteronomy 29 29 it says that he said the secret things that belong to god and the things that are revealed they are unto us and for our children that the word that he said that we may do all that is in the word of the law secret belong to god what is revealed to you it is for you and for your children forever so not just your children your children's children your children's children generations to come you know what it means it means that if something is going on in your family that you will be cruising and just say that oh i am okay uh, so everything you know we have people that love their slaves i mean their slavery we have slaves that love their slavery we have people that are in captivity but they love their captivity they are not willing to do anything about it and this is the case when daniel found himself in uh, in babylon the israelite the children of israel they said okay now we are here let's just live our lives here daniel said no well there must be something we, we are not from here but now that we are here there is, is something about the whole situation daniel set his heart to find out the secret behind the sin and the lord revealed that secret to daniel and daniel said my goodness so this is how it is god have never released us and you know into this slavery to keep us here forever something must be done we have to go back to jerusalem somebody my son you are born into a family you saw your grandparents i mean failure failure upon failure do you know how you know it is a failure that you are born in a family of failures just look around you the house that you are born into look at your parents your grandparents look at i mean look at everything around it's all poverty poverty and richer than and you are just cruising that is how it is i said it this morning i said you know the places that we come from there are we i mean in my own village i have seen people that are struggling struggling to even have one square meal in the day only one only one and people keeps their life you know they keep their life going somebody might stand one day and sit and say the lord what is going on the same way that you are struggling to have one meal at your table some have abundance abundance it's our god respecter of person the bible says no so there is something that you might know about your own case unless you go unless you desire to really know 
to come out. Then the Lord will reveal, will reveal it to you. Once you have gone to God and God reveal it to you, what must you do? He said, it is for you and for your children that ye may do all that is the word of the living God. So according to the word of God, what must I do? This family of poverty, these things that we keep doing, the same thing. My grandfather was the same. My great-grandfather was, great was the same. My mother is the same. My father is the same. My brethren are the same. We are all in the same boat and the same poverty. When is this going to stop? I'm just giving one example. To tell you that the law can let you roam around, roaming around over and over in all contentment on what you are doing. That is not right. You have to come up higher. Seeking to come up higher. For then, will they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged shall have no more conscious of sin. You see that? So, you know what it means? Let me read it again so that you understand. If you go out of this place with a clear understanding of the move of God, with his people, you will be okay. It is not just the law of Moses and the law in Christ. It's a kingdom principle that one must understand to move. They keep doing the same thing. And the word says that he said, when are they going to stop doing this? They have to look into the situation. He said, because the worshippers, the people that keep doing the same thing, if truly whatever that, were, that they were doing it was really profitable for them, they would. It would have changed their conscience. It would have changed their minds. You see the situation, the same thing going on over and over, over and over, over and over. And you are not, I mean, look around. Everybody of your family, the same thing. But it is not like that is how it is. It cannot be that is how it is because others are doing very well. Others are doing very well. They are swimming in the higher level of the law. This is the standard. That is how it is. We come stand in the church and say that God had blessed me. What blessings are you talking about? Your mother is poor. Your father is poor. Your brethren are poor. You are here eating one dollar chicken and you say God has blessed me because you are in America. I mean, this is like crazy. It's craziness. You have not, you, you, you didn't understand. It's like, oh, me, it's okay. Uh, when I sin, I, I have God to bring. But if my mother sin and has no God to, 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 to bring, let her die. Look at you. And you know, he's talking about the conscience, the conscience that must change. So as far as the mindset, the heart is the same, you would die in that same poverty. But let me tell you, when you die in that same poverty, it doesn't stop there. Your children, that you love so much, they will die the same way, probably worse than you. Because time is not constant. Things are getting harder as time goes. They are children's children. Failure upon failure upon failure. Somebody must stand and start looking into the word of the living God and say that I want to come up higher. I want to come up higher. Things must change. Well, only Jesus, as the sacrificial lamb, was offered and sacrificed in order to take away the first, that he may establish the second. In other words, you have to know exactly what you must do to terminate that, you know, on progress life in your life and then seek to to move he said Jesus Christ is the only one who was sacrificed and his, the sacrifice of Christ himself brought us to another level now people are free to move forward 
Let's read the scripture together. Hebrews 10. We're going to break it down from verse 3 to 9. Verse 3 to 9. Hey, let me say one thing. Bible, it is not meant for you to know uh, that shall not kill only. Bible is called the book of life. Everything that is written here in the Bible, it is for you to live your life. To live life. That is what the Bible is all about. So if you read the Bible and you are all that you are getting is, uh, and then uh, uh, Miriam said to Moses, uh, Moses, are you the only one that God speaks to? Verse 3 of Hebrews 10. He said, but in those sacrifices, talking about the goats and the bulls, that will not make their life any form of change. Okay? In those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. So the sacrifices of the Old Testament, the sacrifices under the law, there is always a remembrance every year. They keep doing the same thing. Every year. Every year, what is it that they are doing? Every year, the high priest must go to the holy place to offer sacrifice for the people they have not come up higher the same thing over and over the mindset is that if i sin i bring goat and i will be cleansed till next time if i have a meal on my table today okay uh, tomorrow i will struggle and get another one meal but never seek to find out when am i going to be the source of others' provision. When am I going to be the source of others' provisions? Because when you see others giving, and you know, when am I also going to receive thank you from somebody? When is someone going to say, God, I thank you for this man's life because of your blessings upon his life? And every year, they keep going. They keep going, offering the high priest has to go to the holy place. Oh Lord, your people, here is their blood. Boom. And people's life are not changing. People's life are not changing. They know your family as a family. Some of the things that are happening in your village, they won't even call you. They will not even call any member of your family because they know. They know that there is nothing good. I mean, we are going to make financial decisions, important stuff. We are looking for people that can come and sit down and share ideas with. Do you know that when the money is there, even if you are foolish, people think you are wise. So Hebrews 10.4, he said, For it is not possible that the blood of the bulls and the goats shall take away sins. There are certain things that you keep doing that it is impossible for you to come out. You'll be turning around the same wilderness all the time. All the time. He said, the blood of those goats and the bulls, there is no way that these people can come up on a higher life by, by that lifestyle, mindset of if I sin, I bring the goat. If I sin, I bring the goat and not be willing to work on the inner, inner man. So verse 5 of Hebrews 10, he said, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, when Jesus came to the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. So, you see, okay, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. What is he talking about? Well, the word says that, we said it in Hebrews, I mean in John 1.17, said so the, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Nobody would have known that God is not willing to receive those sacrifices. But when Jesus came, Jesus said, I have come as the sacrificial lamb. And I want all of you to know, this is the reason why there were so much, the Pharisees were so much against Jesus. Because they were thinking that he was 
saying things that were outside God's word. He said, I want you guys to know that the father that you keep sacrificing this goat for, he doesn't want them. He does not want them. He was doing this so that you come up higher. That you come to a point to say that, you know what, I'm tired of all these sacrifices. Is there not something that I can do to really make my life better? But when Jesus said, I have come as the real lamb that God had prepared to be sacrificed and everyone that will come to me, there will be no more. No more of any form of bulls and goats sacrifices. And they were so much against him. Why? The same John, the 118 says that. He said, no man has seen God at any time. But the only begotten that is in the bosom of the Father, he had come and declared him. This is one of the declarations of the, of, of the Son of the Father. Nobody, they could not have gotten this. From the time, look at the time that the law was given, the time of Moses all the way down to the time of Jesus Christ or John the Baptist as the last Old Testament prophet. The mentality of people, only God knows that dispensations have been passed. And people, nobody is questioning anything. And keep doing the same thing. The same thing. So, if you don't pay attention, let me tell you. If you are, your eyes, you are not praying for God to reveal things to you. To know exactly the reason why your situation is what it is. You will die in the same way that your great, great, great father died. And not just you. We have said it. That your generations to come, if nobody is calling upon the Lord for a change, you'll be going deeper and deeper, sinking. He had come and declared the Father, the will of the Father. So in verse 6 of Hebrews 10, Jesus said, In burnt offerings, and sacrifices for sin how thou you know when i say jesus said is the, the written word is the, of the holy spirit okay uh-huh so it was said of jesus you know in burnt offering and sacrifices for sin thou had had no pleasure you see that in burnt offering and those sacrifices for sin god said i have no pleasure in them so as you keep sinning and bringing those goats to God, you think that, oh, the Lord is pleased. My sins are cleansed and you are okay. You know what it means? As you keep having, uh, you know, out of your struggles every day and be able to put a little meal on the table that day and you keep saying, oh, Lord, I thank you for blessing me. At least my children and I, <laughs> we have something to eat today. And you keep going year after year, day by day. You are living your life that way. And you keep thanking God. The revelation must come to you and tell you that God is not pleased to see you living that way. He is not. He is not. Verse 7. He said, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. Talking about Jesus. To do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the law. So by the law, all these things, your routines, the law said I have no pleasure in them. You have to seek of renewing your mind for the higher things that God has in plan and in store for your life. Then in conclusion, verse 9, he said, Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will. This is, O God, this is Jesus. I come to do thy will, O God. I come to do thy will, O God. We are talking about the sacrificial lamb. I come to do thy will, O Lord. 
He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. The moment that one will seek to know God's will, the Lord will take away your reproach. God will take away your shame. God will take away your struggles. And the Lord God who wants you to come up a higher life will usher in a new way of living. You will become a source of blessing to others. You will not be talking about square meals because your home is a home of provision. That is what the Lord God intends to do with you. What are we talking about? You know, it is also to tell us that if the law of Moses has been taken out to bring in the law in Christ Jesus, we said it, Romans 8-2, then it means that we ourselves that are receiving that law of Christ must be willing to enjoy the benefits of that law. He takes away the first and ushered in the second. Hallelujah. I have seven points to make. We have made only two of them. We're going to try and walk through all the seven. We ourselves are sanctified through the offerings of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. We ourselves, you and I, when we say we have come to be believers, born again children of God, this is what it means. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. Hebrews 10 and the verses 10 to 12. Hebrews 10 verse 10 to 12. He says, By the which will we are sacrificed, nor are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standard daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But in Jesus Christ, in this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God the Father. You know what it means? Let me explain it a little bit. What it means is that we that are brought in to be born again children of God, sins, sin sacrifices are no more required because we have been sanctified. Sanctified, it means set aside, cleansed, holy for the purpose. And it was not done without, without sacrifice. It was done, we ourselves were, were not sacrificed, but Christ was sacrificed for us. So it is something that we have to accept it. You have to accept it. That you are sanctified by the sacrificial lamb. The death of Christ is part, I mean, yeah, it's your sanctification. The body of Christ that was prepared to be sacrificed to the Father, which is a sweet smelling offering unto him, it had made you to be accepted because it sanctified you. In the sight of the Father, pure holiness. Renew your mind to renew, you know, to live the new life that God has set before you. Someone comes around and say unto you, because of what the Lord God has done, your mindset has been renewed, and now you have become the source of many provisions. The source of many provisions. For any reason, you enter into contention with someone for one, one reason or another. And someone is reminding you of your past. We know your family. We know your family. We know you. We know your generations. We know your grandfather, your great-grandfather. This money that you have, we don't know where you have gotten this. Home. 
Maybe you have gone and got, got some juju. This is juju manual. Hey. You know, you must be broken out of such a statement from somebody because you know that it is not juju money that you have gotten it out of the change of mind. You must be the one to recognize what the Lord God has done for you. That you are not, you, you are no more with the, you know, sins, sins hanging around you. You are sanctified. You are cleansed by the body of Christ. And you have to accept it and move on. If people are going to dwell on your past, let them sit there and waste their lives talking about your past. Many have not come to understand this principle of life. Once the change has come that this is what the Lord has done for you, move forward. Move forward. Because there will always be people that know your family. Thank you, Lord. By one offering, Jesus had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Perfection, we saw it, that they keep bringing this goat. And they were not thinking of why they, do, they keep doing the same thing. And they were always stagnant. Perfection was never coming on their way. He said, upon this sacrifice of the body of Christ, he had also perfected the sanctified. So anyone that will come to be washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, perfection it is on your way. You can get there. Whatever that it is. If truly you want to get there, you will get there. Because he had made it possible. Under the Old Testament, it was impossibility. But under the law in Christ Jesus, it is a possibility. You want to bring the, the level of the family on a higher level. You can do that. You can. It is possible for you to do it. And you have to use that wisdom because some of us have known the principle in, uh, <laughs> in all the evil works in some of our family members. As the Lord has blessed you and put you in America and now probably you have a good job and you have, you know, you can really, and you are willing to help others that are behind your own family people. You want to bring you want to bring the level of certain of them on a higher level you have to make sure who you are fellowshipping with who you are trying to bring up because some of them they are not willing to and they would just be waste wasting your resources wasting your you know so what I, what does it mean it means that a child of god must come to a point to recognize that as people say that this type of life is impossible. As people say that you cannot, you cannot be a child of God and be able to pray for your enemies like Jesus said. How can I pray for the one that is, that is killing me? I have to come and stand and say, Holy Ghost, fire into that person's head. But Jesus said, you know, you have to come to that point. Why can you pray for your enemy? How, I mean, what must you do to get to the level that you are praying for your enemy? It is one that have come to understand what Christ has done for his life, who he is, what the blood of Jesus is doing for him, what the name of Jesus is doing for him, and where he is in our Lord Jesus Christ. You will be looking for me, you can't find me. Because before you find me, you have to overcome Jesus. So I will pray for you. I will pray for you because you need to come up higher. This is why. So, Hebrews 10, 14, as a confirmation of the perfection, he said, by one offering, Jesus had perfected forever them that are sanctified. By one offering, perfection is not impossibility for our lives. We, we will get there. Say amen. If you keep coming to church and you are always fighting with your husband at home, fighting with your wife at home, fighting with your children, every time you are angry what type of life is this you will die early but you don't have to die early you don't have to the mind change the mindset must be changed and release yourself onto the mighty hand of the, of the living god and you'll see what god is going to do 
But if you come stand here, uh, pastor, <laughs> evangelist, and you are like this, and you are like that, you want to hold on the microphone and that. Meanwhile, you only God knows how much you are suffering at home. Seek the perfection. Seek to come up higher. You know, that's your life. It's like, it's like you are faking home. You just fought with your wife and come <laughs> and, uh, and be holding the microphone and praise the Lord and everybody. Hallelujah. Because we are all in the same boat. Everyone is defeated. We can come up higher. Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, triggered the new covenant. The new covenant, this life that I'm talking about, where you will be able to live by the spirit of God. To live in the inner, inner life. Not what people see, but truly who you are from within. Genuineness. When you say yes, your yes is yes. People know you in your integrity. Before they come and talk to you in noises, they know that if you go to this man with your noises, he would throw you out, for example. Because that is how you are. They see you. The, your, your, your inner life and outward life, there is no difference. Everything of you is according to God's standard. Hebrews 10 and the verses 15 and 16, he says, Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, I will put, he said, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. So you can see the difference. You can see the difference right here in how the law was even given. The law of the Old Testament was given in tablets of stones, outward, people to see. The law that ushered the new covenant, the sacrificial lamb that ushered the new covenant, the law is written in people's what? Mind and hearts. It is not visible. Don't judge people. Do not judge. You don't know them. You don't know how God sees that person. Don't judge the person. Respect the callings of God upon his people. You don't. He said, by their fruits, we shall know them. That is why we don't jump into things. We just watch and see what the Lord God is going to do. If truly it's from God, it shall be manifested. No matter how much opposition. But the Lord God, it is you. You that is in this situation, you are the one that must have the understanding and not to play the devil's game. They will be frustrating your calling. They will be frustrating your gift. They will be frustrating the purpose of God. Let me tell you, they have issue with God, but just make sure that they don't terminate your ministry. They have issue with God because they are, they are opposing God's plan. Automatically, they become God's enemy. They resist the move of God. Pride. Thank you, Lord. There is no more in the, under the new covenant. We said that this sacrifice had triggered new covenant, new way of living. Under the new covenant, there is no more sacrifice for sin. Hebrews 10, 17, and 18. He said, Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. There is no more offering for sin. There is no more offering for sin. So all these people that are asking you, bring goat, bring cow, bring cock. You just have to know. They call them God. Some of them, you know, Nana, uh, Baba, and all kinds of stuff that they, they said they are going to do for you. Bring this, bring that. Just know that it's not from God. If it is from Almighty God, He requires no blood offering. No blood. No blood. We have our own people in the church. One leg in the church, another leg in Baba's house. So they come to church in case. In case. I don't know. Let me tell you. If you come to church in case that you know that you have one leg in Baba's house, please take the leg, the leg that is in the church, take it and have full two legs in Baba's house. Because God will not help you. He will not help you. No way. 
No way. So you are in the church. When things are tough, you are going through what we call the trial of faith. You come to pastor, pastor pray. You go to second pastor, pastor prayed. Third pastor, pastor prayed. Fourth pastor, 29 pastor, pastor has been praying and you come to find out that pastor's prayer is not helping me. And you are still going through afflictions. Say, oh, this whole church thing. Let me go and... Uh, and so, devil will make a way for someone to come and talk to you. Hey, you don't know that allergy over there? That allergy. The one behind the, 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 the opposite of the a, 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 ADB bank. Don't worry, I will take you there. The next thing you know, a child of God is carrying goat on his head. May the Lord forgive you. No more offering for sin. So, a new and living way into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say hallelujah. A new and living way. Everything. You can, you can really get there. You can get there. You know what it means? You don't have to go to Baba to get money to change your family. You don't have to. But if genuinely you will follow Jesus and call upon the name of the living God to find out the secrets that has been the source of the poverty of this house, of this family. Why everybody is dying. Why they are not passing certain age. Why is this thing happening? God will reveal it to you. And once you receive it, he said, go do what is written according to... So if you go to God and you say, Lord, I don't know why I'm always having this, you know, chronic headache. Chronic headache. I have known that my grandfather died out of it. They found my, 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 my grandmother with a brain tumor and she died out of it. I know one of my sisters, one way or another, she died mysteriously because blood was coming out of her nose. And now you are also experiencing chronic headache. What must be your reaction? Philippians 4 says, he said, be careful for nothing. You are not to be worried about it, but in all things, in chronic headache, go to God and let your request be made known to him. Let your request be made known to him and God is going to bring you higher. He is going to bring you up higher by revealing the secret behind your chronic headache. And the next thing you know, verse 7 of Philippians 4, said, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart and mind in Christ. This is so wonderful. These are the two places that the Lord released the new covenant law. Shall keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. When people are worried, they are worried in their minds, in their heart beating, and the next thing you know, they call it high blood pressure. They pressure, your blood will pressure, pressure, pressure you until he pressure you to your grave. Coming up higher on a new way of living. Hebrews 10, 19 to 24, and we stop just right here. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, by a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil that that is to say his flesh. I will explain this. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having an heart sprinkled sprinkled from an evil conscience our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise let us consider one another to provoke into love and to do good works hallelujah i love this sight let us consider what one another to provoke into love can you provoke somebody into love if you don't want me to love you i'm still provoking you i love you by force by tender by fire i love you 
<laughs> Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. This is into New Testament. Christian brother, Christian sister, they see you. When, when unbelievers are seeing you in the street, they said, hello, good morning. You see, they, even the way they say it, it just, it gives you, you know, joy to even answer with your own way of <laughs> your accent and everything. They see, they say, hello, good morning. They say, oh, good morning. But you will see a Christian brother, a Christian sister. It's like the whole world problem is already on her head. They have seen you coming on. And they walk. Like if whatever that they want. Just walking. Until they pass. Oh, Sister Mary! And then she will tell. <laughs> ah, Pastor! <laughs> Hi, Pastor! Sister Mary, didn't you see me? Oh, Pastor, you know this country and the problems. Look at you. People are walking in the same country saying, Good morning! And you are walking around sad and, you know, what, what, what is it? God has given us what? A new way of living. May the Lord God bless you. May you seek for the spirit of the living God so that you can come up higher unto God's glory. In Jesus' name, you have watched the blessed say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Everyone is very welcome. We thank God for your lives. And uh, we have a word from the living God today that is titled, Principles of Building the House of Gold. Principles of Building the House of Gold. To God alone be the glory. To build the house of gold, at least, at least three things that I will mention before we get into details. Number one, the house of God cannot be built except it's being built on the foundation, on the foundation of God's word. The house of God must be built on God's word, on the foundation of God's word. For a man building a house, uh, it is true, the most important thing in that house is the foundation. So, to build the house of God, the foundation is the obedience of the word of God. To build the house of God, the foundation is the obedience of the word of God. That is the first thing. The second thing is the distinctive future of God's house, the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire on top of the tabernacle, the fire of the Holy Ghost. The second thing that must be in the temple, in the house, is fire, fire, the fire of God. There must be clear, a clear working of the Holy Spirit in that house. The fire of Almighty God must be present at all times. This is something that you cannot, you cannot duplicate. This is something that is unique. The presence of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God. You can build anything, any house out there, but if the fire of God is not in that house, that house is not God's house. That is the second thing that one must be checking that indeed it is present in that house. And the purpose of God, you know, bringing us together is to reach out to other people who don't have what we have. So that the third thing that one must understand when building the house of God is to reach out to souls. Is to reach out to souls. So we said it. Number one, the foundation must be on the word of God. Number two, 
The fire of God must be in the house, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And number three, the church must have a goal to reach out to souls. Building up a spiritual house, 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verse is 5. 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verse is 5. He said, ye also as lively stones, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices and acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So you see that it is not just the structure per se and it is not only the presence of God in that house. The people that are also coming must be built. You have to build, you have to build the people unto God's glory. So everyone and each one of us, we must monitor our lives to see the growth. You are coming to the house of God, you keep coming to the house of God. What is in the house? The word in the house, the fire in the house must bring forth divine transformation in your life. Divine transformation in your life. It cannot be possible for one to keep coming before Almighty God and be remaining the same. There must be a spiritual house that is being also built from within. Divine transformation. And it must be clear. It must be clear from every angle of the word saying that this spiritual house that is being built must start from your home must start from within must start it might be seen in your every single day life it might be seen in your every single day life so when we said on the third section we said that the church must have the goal of reaching out to people not reaching out to people in the you know in the sense of Counting people in the church. Numbers. No. But reaching out to people in the sense of transformation of life. Bringing souls to God. Bringing souls to God. Not a church. We are filled. <laughs> the house is filled. But the people are not full. The house of God is filled with the Holy Spirit, with the presence of the living God, with the word of God, but people are not full. Can that be possible? It will be possible. Because even Christ himself, God himself, is not forcing himself on no one. So what you don't want, God will not give it to you. It might be the church purpose to monitor everyone and each one to make sure that we are growing together. You must have the responsibility clear understanding of the reason why you are coming to church if your reason is you are coming because you are meeting your friends here okay that is but we are not talking about that we are talking about building the spiritual house building the spiritual house matter of fact it is the only thing that you're going to take with you it is the only thing that we, you are going to take with you because through that your home will be built through that your personality is going to be built through that the Lord is going to receive a soul unto his glory. So the principle of building God's house, we must make sure that we are being spiritually built unto God's glory. You are building spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up sacrifices acceptable unto God by Christ. To offer up. So, this morning we were in Sunday school. They were sharing how the Lord takes us from one degree of glory to another. But from the very beginning, took us from darkness and brought us to his marvelous light. He said, he blotted out Colossians 2.14 the handwriting which was written against us and contrary to us. So, we came to Christ 
and whatsoever that the enemy had packaged for our lives. Uh, if one will remain under that umbrella, let me tell you, God will make sure that the works of the enemies over your life are destroyed. Because, you know, from that scripture, please, if it is possible, project that scripture for us so the people can see. Colossians 2, 14. He said, blotting out the handwriting. The handwriting, which was the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. So this is what the enemy had been sitting down and written concerning the people of God. This is the reason why when you are coming to the house of God, there must be a transformation in your life. Because this handwriting of the devil is not automatic in the sense that if you don't come under the umbrella of Christ, this will remain upon your life forever. And you'll be going through struggle upon struggle, struggle upon struggle. But because he said that it's an ordinance that is against us. Against us. Against us, against the plan of Almighty God. Contrary to us. Contrary to the nature that God has given us. The whole purpose of the enemy is to make sure that God's plan do not come to pass in your life. Uh, but that is not what the Lord God wants us. So when we are building the house of God, it's not only physical house, it is the spiritual house that must be built. The spiritual house that must, people might feel, they must feel freedom. The word of God coming to you, the fire must be there. The fire must be there. And if the fire is there, every Every single chaff of the enemy is quaint out. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Divine transformation that is coming upon the person's life. Every time that there is fire, you're going to see breakthrough. When the fire is there, you're going to see transformation of life. When the fire is there, you're going to see that the works of the enemies are not having its way anymore. He said it was contrary to us because Jesus Christ took it out of the way and nailed it on the cross. And nailed it on the cross. So I have good news. You know, we talk about the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. One thing that we don't know about this cross is what this scripture is saying here. The handwriting of ordinances it was against us and on our way. The Lord took it out of our way and nailed it the roman soldiers did not know that when they, were, they put the nails in christ's palm and feet and they were nailing it they didn't know that they were nailing the works of the enemy package for your life they didn't know they did not by christ did not only nailed <laughs> our sins on the cross so god defeated satan over our lives God, almighty God, made it possible. That is why the cross, you know when people wear the cross and they don't understand the meaning of the cross, Satan knows exactly what cross means. It is only the child of God that does not know what the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ means. The blood that is flowing, it has its symbol. The nail that they put there and the hammer, when they started hammering on that nail, I am just telling you one thing that is written just right here. That the package of darkness written as an ordinance against your life. The purpose of the enemy to crush you, it was on your way. So you didn't know, maybe at the age of 45, the enemy has packaged something that will not allow you to go beyond the age of 45. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, he said before the foundation of the world, this is how it was possible. Before the foundation of the world, you were created. God had you in mind. The Lord knew everything that is going to come to pass. And he packaged, he took that ordinance, put it on that nail, and they hammer it. He's talking about blotting out. So you can see the accent of the blood of Jesus Christ. You can see the cleansing, the cleansing. That is why Romans 8, there is no condemnation. Condemn that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. 
So one is when one comes to the point to build the spiritual house, the within house. That person cannot, you cannot, you cannot be, 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 be pushing the, the person anyhow. Because there is constant fire burning upon that person's life. That's why I see situations and I look at it and I, I say, oh, this thing is not, it is contrary to the word of God. You are a child of God under that umbrella of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release you and we see results. We see results. God's word is truth. And it's not like, uh, you know, it's so amazing how this ministry is experiencing wonders. What people are shouting out there, if we must shout of what is happening here. We have seen people dead that the Lord brought them back. We have seen all kinds of testimonies. Simply because of the preaching and the fire in the house of the living God. If the children of God are willing, you don't have to go through what you are going through. The enemy knows that the moment that you come under that fire, something is definitely going to happen to him. I pray for somebody here that may the fire of the Lord descend upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Building up spiritual house. Number two, he said, you are the spiritual house of God. You are the spiritual house of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and the verse is 16 and 17. We said we are talking about the principles of building the house of God. And we said that building the house of God will never be differentiated from building your own life. Because in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, he said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you so he said, if any man defiled the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The temple of God. So you can see that there is no difference between you and the house of the living God. So when we say we are building the house of God, the foundation of the word must be there. The fire of the spirit must be there. People's life must be changed. They might come up on a higher level, higher and higher in every aspect of the term. The blessings of God, Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessings with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. These things must start happening in your life. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You come to Christ, your life must change. You must see a change in your life. So, uh, the indicative to see that if truly you are in the house of God, these things must be measured. Uh, the leaders to build the house of God, these things must be the focus of building that house. What is the sense? The essence of having such a great building, people coming and their lives are messed up. God cannot even take one glory out of it. Yes, the music is good. Yes, the service is well organized. Yes, everything looks perfect. But the only thing that God cares about is not in line with the God's requirement. Then everything is wrong. Then everything is wrong because we can't take anything to God. This is building a physical house, not spiritual house. This is building a house for man, not for God. But if it is for God, it must bring glory to Almighty God. Thank you, my Lord. You are the Lord's house. You are spiritual house of God. So, do you know that the first time that the house, you know, the word house of God appeared in the Bible is in Genesis 28 and the verses 17 to 18. Let's look at how the whole thing happened. You remember when our brother Jacob was running away because he saw the brother, twin brother, seeking to, to go after his life. And the mother 
Rebecca, the dad Isaac said, my son, go to Laban's house. And uh, uh, Rebecca's brother. So go there and uh, get one of the wives. One of the, 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 the daughters as thy wife. To marry. Just go there. So on his way to Laban's house, this is where something is going to happen to him because on the way, he was tired. And then he picked up a stone and used it as a pillow. And when he was asleep in the middle of the night, I'm telling you the story, he saw a ladder stretch forth from heaven to earth. And the angels of God ascending and descending and the Lord started speaking to him. The Lord spoke to this man. God spoke mysteries about his life. God told him that my son, I am with you. And great fear came upon that young man. Listen to the word. Genesis 28, 17 to 18. He said, Jacob was afraid and said, after all that he had experienced, he was afraid. And he said, how dreadful is this place? How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Hallelujah. I have good news for you. The house of God is not a place to mess up. The house of God is not a plain ground. The house of God is a place that is dreadful. The house of God, it is the gateway to heaven. Hey, every single thing that we will say about the house of God, you have to bring it to yourself because the Lord said that ye are the spiritual house of God. Do you know that you are, your life is not supposed to be messed up? You must be a very, very dreadful creature. Satan might see you and see the embodiment of Jesus Christ. Powers of darkness might see you and see the light of God. How dreadful is this place? He said you are a holy nation. Priesthood, priesthood. So we are not just one moving around rikiki and you know the enemy subdue as one. No, 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 no. He said that in this place, this place is dreadful. And it is the gateway to heaven. Every single soul in the church, every single soul in the church, that heart must be a gateway to heaven. That soul is heading to heaven. Oh. That soul is heading to heaven. If the church is doing the right thing, if the church is doing the right thing, and people understand the reason of the church, Heaven will be filled up with all that God created and sent here on earth. Everybody will be going back home. And the enemy will not have nobody. By the way, let me say this. Sometimes when we speak, it seems like Satan has, has people, power to... No, he doesn't. He himself is going to be in the lake of fire. Our God is the one that is in control. Well, let me tell you, Satan is not master of hell. Satan did not create hell. God created hell. So don't let it seem like Satan has, uh, you know, a place called hell. That he's taking people there for their enjoyment or anything like that. Hell, God created it. Satan is going to be one among people that will go there to hell. So he's going to go through the same sufferings as anyone else that goes against the word of God. Anyone else that will not come to know Jesus Christ. Let that be clear. That is how it is. God sees you. He said, I can see the gate of heaven in this young one. I can see that through you, many will come to go to heaven. Through you, many will see you as a way to Christ. Building the spirit man. Building up the, 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 the house of the living God. And people might come to you and see, ah, he's different. He's different. Not faking no. The reality. 
You know the type of life that you live, you don't struggle. The type of life that you are living and you are full of light. You are full of empowerment of the Holy Ghost. You don't struggle. You don't, it's not like you are putting on something. Absolutely not. That is who you are from without and from within. Because everything that comes out proceeded from within. And what they see, that's what they get. Filled with the light of the Holy Ghost. This is the gate of heaven. So the second part of the, the scripture, Genesis 20, 28, verse 18 says, He said, then Jacob rose up early in the morning and he took the stone that he slept on as pillow and then he set it up for a pillar and pour oil upon the top of it. You see, the man had this understanding of what has been done. Indeed, this place is the house of God. The house of God must be a place that people can use as a pillow. You can sleep sound. You see that? The house of God must be a place that they come, they must be trust, they must be, you know, integrity. They must be, we are building people to heaven. We are building souls to heaven. So, coming to the house of God makes behaving, hey, it is dangerous. It is a dangerous thing to come in the presence of the living God. You might be a worker in the house of the Lord. Fear must come upon you. Reverential fear must come upon you because he, this place, this place is a dreadful place. This place is not a place to mess up. This place is not a place of fornication and adultery and anything else. This place is a place where souls are built unto Almighty God. You want to have life? Come to the church. Because the church is the pillar of life. The church is the pillar. He said the man took the stone. Do you know what stone he was talking about? This is the symbolic of Jesus Christ. The living stone. The cornerstone. The same stone. J Jacob experienced Christ when he was not even given yet. And he said, you see the, the, the analogy between the two. Christ being, the church is Christ. So the church is Christ. He said, he took the pillow, that, that stone. He said that this is, this place is the house of God. The house of God. When we see people in the church and living all kinds of lives, let me tell you, there is something that one must know as a child of God. Number one, you have to know that everything that you do, God sees you. Because there are three that bear witness. They bear records in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are also three that bear you know, witness here on earth. He said the blood, the water, and the Spirit. So there is nothing that anyone is doing that is hidden in the sight of God. How much more when you come to the house of God? How much more when you have been assigned as a worker in the house of God? How much more when you have been brought in as a child of God, part of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ? Every handwriting of the devil as an ordinance against your life and contrary to you must be seen as the Lord has done or has dealt with it. Cleared unto God's glory. That is why we don't, we don't come to church. Our Sundays, we come Sundays, we give the word of God. We glorify God for what the Lord has done. But the reality of power is from Monday all the way. Monday all the way. The church is not sleeping. Because we know that we have been called in battle and we fight. We fight against the people in our people's life. We fight, we are making sure that the works of the enemy are not, you know, they do not have understanding. So, that by the time will come, the Lord will bring them in. But somebody must stand for them. And we are standing for them. We don't come out there and boasting of whatever that we are doing, you know. But we want to make sure that the word of God is established in their lives. Their time will come. That is why we have to pray for them. We don't condemn them. They that have not come yet. Somebody probably prayed for you to also come in. The grace that found you. We extend the same grace unto them. So when we have come to the house of God and we're having peace, 
We have to learn how to extend peace to our family members, to our loved ones, and see the purpose of God for mankind. How is it that now, now look at you. You who used, you couldn't even sleep at night. Today, today look at you. You are sleeping like a baby. And you will know a, a, a brother out there, a sister out there, have not come to know Christ yet. And going through all kinds of torment. I pray for somebody that the spirit of evangelism will come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Then in Genesis 28 verse 22, he said, Jacob said, this stone, yes, this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. This stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, O God, I will surely give the tent unto thee. Look at this, the tithe. The tight from the house of God, Lord, all that indeed this is the house of God. Father, all the blessings, every single thing that you will bless me with, from now onwards, this is my covenant unto you that I will bring the tent, I will bring one tent of your blessings to thy house. To God alone be the glory. Hallelujah. So when we come to, to the house of God, we're supposed to be hearing the word of God. When we come to the house of God, we're supposed to be hearing the word of God and nothing else. For only one purpose, building the source of God to heaven. Building the source of God to heaven. He said, so I said it, I said the, 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 the importance of the source of hearing must be so, one must be careful with it. We are in the end times. Anything goes. But one thing that we know, the church is not a fake place. So the church, we are not running you know, some kind of uh, uh, psychology classes or you know, brainwash or anything like that. We are not motivational speakers. We are preachers. Ministers of the living God. We preach. It's a day that are sent, they preach the word of God and nothing else. You come to the house of God, you come to hear the, the word of God. Hearing the word of God for what purpose? For your faith to be built. Romans 10, 17, he said, Then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God. Luke 8 and the verses 12, he said, These by the way, he said, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and take away the word out of their hearts least they should believe and be saved remember the parable of the sower uh -huh. how he sowed the seed and the ones that fell on the wayside so they heard the word the word profit them not the reason is because there was no ground in them for the word to take seed and really really germinate and bring forth spiritual houses these are the ones the enemy comes around he does whatever that he wants to do with them you cannot come to the house of god one leg in the house one leg in, a, in i don't know what the word that you hear in the house of god will not profit you because satan is always ready to take the word away from you the word is the foundation if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do if you are not taking the word of god serious you are not seeing that the word is what you have against. Do you know that the battle, our battle against the spiritual world, the word is the sword. The sword is what we use to come against the works of the enemy. That two-edged sword, it cuts in asunder. Hebrews 4.12, he said, For the word of God, it is what? It is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing ascender of the spirit and the soul. So the word is not something that you can just be moving around and you are receiving the word and anything that comes on your way is just, no, 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 no. You will stand and you say that the word of God says. God said. And the situation must bow. Because he said at the mention of the name Jesus, 
every knee, every knee, every knee must bow. We are not talking about knee in the sense of human knee. Human knee. We are talking about God being the, sup the, the supreme of all. You hear that name, you must bow. Stones are bowing. Trees are bowing. Anything that God created, and God created it all. Everything bows. Now let me say this. We said it, that God wants to see the spiritual house being built, starting from you. And his house where the people are gathering. But truly, who is the man out there that can build the house of God? Who can build the house of God? This is the word of the living God, Isaiah 66, and the verses 1 to 2. He says, that says the Lord. He said, heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye shall build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? You can see that. So if man, man does not, doesn't, does not have understanding of what building the house of God is all about. The Lord said, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house that a man is going to build for God? But he said in verse 2, for all these, all those things have my hand made. I said it, but he made it all. And all those things have been, says the Lord. But this, to this man will I look. Listen to the type of person that can build the house of God. God said, to this man would I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contract, you know, contrite spirit. And trumpet at my word. Hallelujah. Uh, God is looking for simple people, plain people, who are responsive and reverent to everything that God says. God is looking for people that are broken by the word of God. He's not looking for, you know, clever people. He's not looking for social status. The Lord is looking for people that fear. They hear his word and they have that reverential fear. They tremble at his word. Tremble at the word of God. These are the people that the Lord is looking to. When God is looking at you, all the plans of darkness, all plans of darkness against your life, the Lord sees it all. So that is why he, he, he blotted it out on that cross. He nailed it on that cross. This is the type of people that the Lord is looking for. One that is called by God to build his house. One that hears the word of God and reverential fear comes. One that hears the word of God and tremble at the word of God. One that is humble, contrite spirit. He's not judging people. It's not the clever, cleverness of the world. Not the social, social status. I went to a place yesterday. And they were like, this one will stand there, Dr. So and so. This one there, Dr. So and so. And so the, the only thing was like, you know, you, you would think that if you don't have anything, uh, you cannot even come stand there and preach the word of God. It is not the world that called people of God. The servants of God are called by Almighty God. And there is no degree that is given to heaven to them. It is the Holy Spirit that works through them. The Spirit of the living God. I have PhD in computer science, but I never said anything. And none of them knew anything. But everyone was just boasting, and, and doctor said, doctor did, and so what? Matter of fact, we, our PhDs, we have even put them, you, you, you know, we have locked them on the side. We don't want it anymore. We don't want it anymore. Do you know what it means? To be called by Almighty God and be called by a brother, you know, to, to be called as a brother, a sister in Christ. This is greater than any, 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 I don't know what that is out there. But, but the ministers are boasting of that. And this one, so, so, and so. And this one, so, so, and so what? We call you to come and preach the word of God. Preach the word of God. Preach 
the word of God. God who calls you, he knows you. He knew that you have already a doctorate degree. That is not what he's talking about. The cleverness of the world it has nothing to do with the cleverness in the, in the kingdom of God. The wisdom of God is from above. It's not from the world. And they are not understanding it. So they are intimidating people that are truly called by God. The Lord said, these are the people that I called. The one that can build the house of God. The one that hears my word and tremble at the word. Not the one that stands out there and boasts of his degrees in the world. The house of God is built by revelation. Let me show you Matthew chapter 16 and the verse. Let me read from 13 to 19. This is a story that brings clearly that indeed the house of God is built by revelation. Jesus Christ, he came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi. He asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say? That I, the son of man, am. So basically, he asked them a simple question. You guys have gone out. You heard so many things. What did you hear? What were people saying about me? Then the disciples said, Lord, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some Elias and others. Jeremiah and one of the prophets. Uh, so they were saying, some are saying that you are John the Baptist, someone says that you are Jeremiah, some says that you are one of these prophets. Then Jesus said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? But okay, this is what you have heard. But you who keep coming to church, what do you say of your Christ? Who is Jesus to you? You who is willing to build the house of God. Who is Jesus to you? You who is a minister of the house of God. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Uh, then, in verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Thou art Peter. Ah, uh, Yes. You stand at the pulpit, you are preaching the word of God every day unto people. You stand out there as a child of God, telling people you are a child of God. You give them the word of God. Cancel, godly cancel every day. Christ asks you, who am I? Do you receive Christ by revelation or you receive Christ by going, just going to church? The sons of Sivas, uh, the, the Jesus that uh, Paul is preaching, so you know that, that one, but you don't, have, you, don't, you don't know him personally. He said, Peter, what you have just said, that I am the son of God, the Christ. Listen, you didn't say it by yourself. It is heaven that is open. And my father show it unto you. Because there is no way to know Christ. Heaven must be open unto you. Heaven must be open unto you. So he said that, Thou art the rock, Peter, upon this rock. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's spend just, we have a few more minutes to go. Uh, bringing down this scripture, or breaking it down, let's try to understand. Number one, Peter is not the rock. Peter is not the rock. But the confession, the revelation he made is the rock. I wrote it down, so I'm saying it clearly. Said, Jesus said, Peter, thou art the rock. 
Peter is not the rock. The church is not built on Peter. But it is the confession that he made. Thou art Christ, the Son of God. This is the rock upon which we are building. The Lord said, upon that revelation, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. So, the church of God, you cannot come out there and say that, I am going to build the church of God. You are, you know, everything is close unto you. When things are coming spiritually, you don't see anything. Everything that happens to you, it's all surprise. What type of church is this? What type of man of God are you? Do you think that the Lord is, he will just close the eyes of his, his servant and we just go out there and every time struggle upon struggle and just, no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. The man that is called by Almighty God is a man that is in touch with heaven. Revelation upon revelations. And the wisdom must be given to know how to handle the word of the living God. On what rock is the church built? The church on the Christ who is known by revelation and not by study so. The rock that we're talking about here is the Christ who is known by revelation. That is why I keep saying that I said, you know what? Sometimes some of these things that we are experiencing in the church, the miracles that the Lord is bringing to some people, uh, you can see that <laughs> I have nothing in it. I'm just being an instrument that the Lord is using. When you receive that miracle, it is your faith that is going to be built in Christ who healed you. In Christ that brought forth the miracle, not me. Jesus. So now it's your personal experience. That is why I, I'm always saying, I said, serve God by revelation. You have to know him personally. It is very difficult when you have not come to know Christ. And every time, oh Jesus, every, but you never experience God. God is more than willing to reveal himself to you. Some are saying, we keep praying that we are not, we are not seeing him. Like, no, please. Uh, this is the type of man to whom God will reveal himself. One that trembles at his word. One with a contrite spirit. One that is humble. The Lord knows. And he has seen so much. They that are willing to do his work greatly, build a great house of God and everything else. By the time that the Lord lifts them, then they stand taking all the glory. The Lord knows. Almighty God knows. Upon the revelation, I will build my church. The church must be built on revelation. The church is being directed by the revelation from above. One must know the direction that Christ is taking. Especially at an end time like this. A lot is going on in the churches. Do you think that, you know, one day we're going to talk about the seven churches in the book of Revelation 2. The seven churches. Each one of these churches are prototype. Prototype churches. And everything that Christ will say to one church, you, you will see that it is, it, is, it is forever. Until Christ himself come and then take his church. Until rapture. Until rapture. I will build my church and the gate of hell cannot prevail against the church. If the church is being built by Christ, hell has no power over that church. When we Christians are not bringing much emphasis on the revelation of the Holy Spirit, we cannot build a new covenant church. We have to bring more and more emphasis into the revelation of Christ. That is where the new covenant type of church can be built. Of course, every Christian know, every Christian know that, you know, Christ died for our sins. But when do we really know and get revelation of the truth that Christ died for our sins? It is only when you begin to hate sin and do everything to be free from sin. And then you recognize that 
You are now in touch with heaven. Revelations are coming forth. And then the death of Christ, the power of the cross, of the blood, you're going to see the manifestations of these things. I'm stopping just right here. We thank God for his word. Every single word of what the Lord God has done for us must be manifested in your life. You have to see the glory of God. Gradually, gradually. It's not fake. It's not fake. Christianity, it is real. But it is real to them that are serious. It is real to them that are fully willing to know him. We are experiencing God in our little level. And we keep jumping on our feet. Every time we bow so much because of the wonders and the signs and the wonders that the Lord is, you know, is doing in our midst and boosting you know, our faith so much. We say we thank him. We give him glory and honor. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet. Because heaven is still there. Packed with revelations. Revelation upon revelation. The church of the living God shall be built. If the devil wants it or not, we shall build the spiritual house of the living God. To him alone be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for your lives. And everyone is very welcome. Unto this day that the Lord God has made unto his glory. We have a word from the living God that we titled The Principles of Knowing Secrets. The Principles of Knowing Secrets. So, the question that we first ask is what is secret? Uh, secret it is something that is kept or meant to be kept unknown or unseen by others. This is the definition that uh, dictionary gives. He said, secret, it is something not known or seen or not meant to be known or seen by others. That is what secret is all about. We are talking about the principles of knowing secrets. Sometimes, and most of the time, it is very important for a child of God to find out the secrets behind things. Many, 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 many things are going on in the realm of the spirit. God himself said that, he said, I am a spirit, John 4:24. So, if you worship me, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. But we do also know, I'm trying to explain the reason why it is important to find out the secret behind things. The book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 3 says, he said, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That the things that we see, they are not made of things which do appear. So the reality that we see uh, in the physical realm is not, it's not the true reality. Uh -huh. The reality that we see in the physical realm, what our physical eyes can see, it is not it. There is more into it. So, you know, that scripture is so powerful. He said... If you want to know the reality of what is truly happening in the physical realm, get into the spiritual realm. Then you will know the reality of it all. So, secrets behind things are important. There is something in the book of Colossians, a biography of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 and the verses 16 to 18. The word says that there is a fact of life realities that everyone and each one of us must know about this God that we serve. Talking about what the Lord God had used the son Jesus Christ to do for us. He said, by Jesus were all things created that are in heaven 
and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. And he is before all things. Christ is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, Jesus, might have the preeminence. Hallelujah. Everything involves and centered around Jesus Christ. All things. He said, all things consist in Christ. All things consist in Christ. So, uh, when one is looking for secrets, it will be just wisdom to be going to our Lord Jesus Christ to find out <laughs> secret behind things. Because number one, he is the creator of it all. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. The Father himself saying that this is the testimony of the Spirit of what the Father has done through the Son. He created it all through him. And nothing will hold until it comes together in Christ. Basically, that is what this scripture means. So if, you know, any child of God is looking for, you know, secrets behind things, looking for understanding, knowledge, trying to find out what is the reality of things, it will be just wisdom to run to the creator. Run, you know, the creator here, he said that uh, Christ is not creator of heaven and earth only. He said, and everything in it, and everything running in it. He talks about principalities and the powers and the dominions and the thrones. They were all created by Christ. Things that are visible to us and things that are invisible also unto us all were created by Christ. You know, I said something last week. I said, some people are thinking that Satan has much power because of that much commotion that, you know, he's causing here. But let me tell you, he is not. He is not master of hell. Satan is not master of hell. Hell, God created it. Jesus created it. Satan, you know, as a fallen angel, he is also going to go to the lake of fire. He will go to hell and be moved to the lake of fire. As God has purposed, he is going to be like any ordinary one who will never listen and come to Christ. That will be ushered to hell. So, so when I see people following Satan, you know, you just have to know that you are following him to hell. But uh, that's why they said to hell with you. No, to hell with you that is doing that evil in the name of satanic powers. And you are going to follow your master to hell. But Satan is not master in hell. Satan is not master in hell. He's going to go through you know, divine sufferings. Let me put it this way. In other words, sufferings ordained by Almighty God. Torment beyond anyone's imagination. So, if you are not coming to Christ, and you, are, you have chosen to follow Satan, the reason why I'm saying this is because someone told me, he said, this is the choice that I have made. I will not follow Jesus, I will follow Satan. I am also telling you, where you will be ended. I am telling you where you will be ended. My, you know, my conscience is clear on this because I do not hold on the word of the living God. We preach the word as it is. So it has come to you to hear the truth of the word from my mouth. The Lord does not hold me. Your blood is not upon my head. It is all well unto God's glory. So, all consists in our Lord Jesus Christ. All is created. You know, created, when he started talking about 
visible things and invisible things, thrones and dominions, powers. So these are the things, when we talk about the thrones and the principalities and the powers, these are the things that we don't, we don't see them when we are moving around like that. It is only when the Lord opens your spiritual eyes that you start seeing the other world. The sufferings that are truly going on. Last Sunday, I told you guys about what the Lord brought forth about they that are in captivity, spiritual captivity. But sometimes we wonder what were those cities where the Lord takes us to see. And you see people going through so much, so much great bondage. And we wonder, we said, Lord, where are these places? He said, these are spiritual things. These are the realities of people. And it is so sad, so, so burdensome. Unless you continue praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and the Lord said, this is the mandate upon your life. This is the mandate upon your life. Pray for the release of the souls. And every child of God must have that mandate to stand and be praying God's will. What is happening in the realm of the spirit is too much. It is way too much. Sometimes we see these people, we don't really know them, but if we see them in the physical realm, there is no way that we cannot recognize them. And there are so many of them. So many. So many. Spiritual world, it is real. Spiritual things, it is real. Jesus Christ himself told you, he said, he created visible things, things that we can see, and also the invisible things. So that is a reality. So when something is going on, it is wisdom for a child of God to find out the reality about the thing that is truly going on. Listen to this. The book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 29, 29. He says that he says, The secret things belonged unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belonged unto us and to our children forever. That we may do all the works of this law. Okay. The secret things belong unto our Lord our God. The secret things, they belong to God. Things that are secret, they belong to Almighty God. So in, in other words, anything that is of the invisible realm, it's all God, it's all plain before Almighty God. And matter of fact, it's not just that. There are also things that pertain to God that no one, when I say no one, no one knows about it. No one knows about it no principalities and powers and anything else but it is deep hidden in the almighty god you see but the point is this the secret god holds it when one stand and be willing to know the secret you're gonna have to go to the one who has it that is god and the lord is more than willing to release the secret unto his children but now, when the child of God had received the secret behind things, he said that the things, the secret that are revealed unto you, it is for you and for your children. That the word, the law, he's, he's talking about the law, the word of the law must be established. In other words, that every single thing that God has called you to come and do, according to the, it is written, the Lord releases his secret to his children accordingly. And as the children receive the secret of their lives, they can stand and pray that it is written type of prayer for the purpose of God to come to pass. Hallelujah. It will not for you, it will not be for you until it is revealed unto you. What is revealed to you, it is for you and for your children. It is for you and for your children. Train them the way that they should go, you know, so that when they grow, they will not depart from it. More is into this. Jeremiah 23 and the verses 24. God said, Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Says the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth? Says the Lord. So this is the God that we are dealing with. The God that, do you know that they that are of darkness, every time that they are doing things, 
They think that nobody is seeing them, including even God. The wicked, when they are plotting and planning and doing evil, their minds are that nothing can ever reach onto them. Nothing can ever stop them. Because of pride and boasting and anything else, but God is clear on this. He said there is, I mean, it makes sense. He created it all. Where is it that someone is going to hide to do whatever that the Lord God will not see? His eye sees everything. There is no place. This is also a counsel for us. There is no place, a hiding place for no one in the sight of Almighty God. Because he said, I filled it all. I filled it all. There is no place where the presence of the living God cannot reach. You know, in the book of Luke, chapter 8 and the verse 17, he said, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So, uh, as far as God is concerned, no, you know, this is... Uh, this is this this is a strengthen our position of strength this scripture is bringing forth clarity and strengthen us in our position in christ that is what i said no matter what someone is planning somewhere no matter what they are doing it is all plain in the sight of almighty god and the good news here god said that it's just a matter of time but what you what they are thinking uh, or what you are thinking will not known it's just a matter of time but it will come plainly plainly he said it shall be manifested it shall be manifested it is amazing you know the things of god we have to be very careful and especially when you are a child of god we sleep in our beds over there and people's life are like videos when we are sleeping you understand that that is how we know what is going on in somebody's life. And for us to stand and start praying for the person. For us to go and warn the person saying that be careful because this and that is yet to come. So we are in prayers. And we have seen this not even once it failed. Every single time it is always the same thing. So we trust in the leadings of the spirit of almighty God. We trust so much in the leaders of the spirit of almighty God. And then especially let me tell you this. Because this week it happened. A man of God messed up in my face. And uh, my spirit was just quenched. I went to bed. And the whole story were just came out on that man's of, man of God's life. You see, you have to be careful because uh, Apostle Paul, he made a statement. He said, if you think you know Christ, be very careful the way that you boast about it. Because you do not know how Almighty God is also working with others of his children. What you are doing that you would think that no one will find out. Let me tell you, when someone to know, the Lord God will bring it forth. Let, the, let this be. You know, two weeks ago we talked about the power of conscience. The power of conscience is that God is not releasing any angel to monitor anybody's life about, oh yeah, you did this. Oh, Anna, we, you did wrong here. No, 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 no. It's not like that. God has written his law in our inward parts. And the conscious of man, he said, you will not need anyone to tell you this is right, this is, this is wrong. The, your conscious, the spirit that dwells in you, who you are, what is making you be who you are, it is going to either excuse you or judge you. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden in the sight of Almighty God nothing so whatever that anyone is doing please remember remember that if someone is willing to find out uh if it's god's will the lord can definitely reveal it unto that person then uh, who has access to god's secret who has access to god's secret the book of psalms psalm 25 and the verse is 14. the word say he said the secret of the lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Hallelujah. 
The secret of God is with them that fear God. You fear God, you will have access to God's secret. You fear God, you are entitled to have access to God's secret. You fear God, God is willing to work with you. You fear God, God is willing to use you as one of his mighty prophets. Amos chapter 3 and the verse 7, he says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You fear God, God will not be coming to do anything without working with you. You fear God, secrets of others are plain before you. You fear God, you will become a mighty vessel in the hand of Almighty God. In the hand of Almighty God. We don't move around boasting of what the Lord is doing in our lives. But these gifts, they are for the edification of the church, not unto our destructions. Not unto our destructions. When the Lord starts using you as a mighty vessel in his hands and entrusted you with his secrets, it is not for you to be moving around in the church and be boasting how great man of God you are, how great woman of God you are. He said that it is for the edification of the church. If this spirit was not working in this ministry, we would have, last year alone, I don't know how many people would have been dead. Last year alone, I do not know. To the extent that one of them, God, even though the person, you know, the person was warned uh, Monday morning. We saw the person in the middle of the night, uh, uh, Sunday night. Monday morning, the person walked into the situation exactly as it was seen previously. Before me, in my very presence, this time physically, the person was put aside and said that, be careful, this and that is yet to come. We stand in the gap in prayers. The following day, the whole thing started. And I mean, to the extent that she died in the hospital. She died in the hospital. They are preparing, I don't know what, and God brought her back again. God brought her back again. So, you know, these are things that we... So, when it is, it is being used that way, Almighty God is taking His glory. The Lord is taking His glory. Prayer. You know, we stood in the gap. We knew that it was coming. Lord, please turn the situation around. Turn the situation around. Turn this. And the Lord made it such a way that even our own sister, uh, Auntie Grace, who was the nurse of the person at that night, when the person was completely rushed to the hospital at that night, but at the end of it all, God has taken his glory. Hallelujah. God has taken his glory. And countless of situations, countless of situations that people are being warned, be careful, this is coming. Be careful, this is coming. Be careful, this is coming. And every time, he said, the Lord revealed the things, the secret things, they belong to God, but the things that are revealed, they are for us and for our children. If your eyes can see it, you can obtain it in the name of Jesus Christ. The book of John, Jesus knew that we would need to know. John 16, 13, he talked about the Holy Spirit. So how be it when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall say, you know, he shall show unto you things. To come he shall show unto you things to come it is god is more than willing to let you know god is more than willing to let you know god is more than willing to you know that is why i said you know we don't prepare war in the time of war we prepare for war in time of what of peace it is in time of peace when everything looks great and fine this is the time that you must be more than serious. But you know how we children of God, we operate. We operate by the time that things are bad. This is the time we get serious. Let me tell you, the time that things are bad, it's already bad. It has been taking place in the realm of the spirit long time ago. But we thank God because our God is a spirit and he knows and he is in control of it all. When something is coming, the Lord comes to his people. He talks to them. 
You know, it's the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. Why is God allowing Satan to operate when the Lord God can shut down Satan at any time? At the, you know, he will raise just a little finger. And he said, at the end of it all, everyone will see Satan and say, ah, is this this guy? This rikiki guy, this nobody who was causing that much problems over here. So God is mighty. It's even an insult to compare Satan to God. An insult. But the Lord is allowing him because he has his time. But the problem is this, that if the children of God are not having understanding of the spiritual principles that governs our presence here in this world, many are fallen victims. Many, 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 many fell victims and they are in the grace. Many. God has given us all, all power, authorities has been given for the child of God to move in and do things unto God's glory. You know, so the way that we look at situations, how we look into our lives become very important because how you look is going to bring forth either reality or fake reality. Either truth about the situation or something that looks like it is what it is. But the reality is that it is not what you see because you do not have access to the reality of the whole situation. You know, so Apostle Paul asked a question in 2 Corinthians 10, 7. He said, do you look on things after the outward appearance? Do you look on things after the outward appearance? Apparently, things after the outward appearance without a spiritual touch will be a deception. You cannot.